So you can see here that I've used the shape stool in order to create these separate boxes for different areas of my nose. What's going on? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Anas. I'm a fourth year medical student studying in London and I'm hella excited for this video. I've been meaning to test out Good Notes for a while and last week Good Notes came out with an update. So I thought, all right, let me test it out for the YouTube. I made a quick purchase and now I've got it and I've been testing it out all week and it's pretty good. What I've kind of found is that Good Notes 5 is almost an amalgamation of OneNote and notability. Just to clarify, this video is not gonna be a full-on review of every single feature in this app. Loads of other people have done it and I'll link some of those videos below. But what I will be doing though is pick out the key features that differentiates this app from OneNote and Notability, which are the ones I've tested, and hopefully you like this video. So make sure you like, comment, subscribe like the video. A key question that I wanted to address for a while is what actually makes a good note-taking app? And I would say that that differs from person to person, but for me anyway, a key ingredient is the ease of access to tools. I want to be able to access the tool that I want with the minimum number of clicks necessary. The whole purpose of having an iPad is that you have all the tools that you need, a brush tool, a highlighter tool, all your stuff is saved and synced in one place. But if it's gonna take like 50 clicks to get to one particular color or to start erasing or whatever, then it defeats the whole purpose of this. And this is the context that I'll be looking at this new GoodNotes app. From. So I've got it open now and the first thing that comes out is that you have folders. One of the issues that people are complaining about is that they wanted to be able to store all their notebooks deeper in through folders. So for example in good notes and notability you have like three levels so I can uh, have fourth year of medicine then I can have a topic then I have the notebooks for example. Here now I can have an infinite number of uh, folders so for example here I've got P year then I've got pediatrics then I've got notebooks, or I can just add another folder. Let's go back and test this out, add a new folder. So if I go in here, I can go into folders, then let's call this test. Okay, and that's it. Then I can go into this folder and I can add more folders. I, I don't think there's a stop to how many folders you can add. But let's open up a new folder and call this test. And what you see here now is there's a huge array of different paper types. You've got narrow line, you've got wide line, you've got all of these legal ones, you've got planner ones, you've got journal ones, you've got so many for different purposes. So personally, I mostly just use the lined paper, but it's good to have the option of different paper styles, um, and this is quite nice. You can also change the cover type, so you've got all of these ones, you've got all these color ones, you've got loads of wonky ones, whatever floats your boat. All right, so this comes up, and you can see that there's a new interface now, which actually looks pretty nice. I like this. It looks quite similar to Microsoft Word on the iPad. It looks a bit minimalist, and you now have this new toolbar. Uh, and again, let's think about the minimum number of clicks to access the tools. What I'll be doing is talking about five key tools uh, and comparing them to some of the other apps. Starting off with number one, and that is the ability to have custom preset pens now up in the toolbar. You can have the three most common colors that you use up here and you can preset them. You can also have the three most common thicknesses of the pens that you want up here. In the notability video, I showed how it takes a number of different clicks to get to a number of different colors, uh, but here I can just choose. I've got a black one here, I've got a blue one here, I've got a red one, and even when I go in here, I can add more colors into this to make it a shorter access. Uh, and then I can set these thicknesses as well. I can change that thickness there. If you go into the pen tool, there are three different pen tools. You've got fountain pen, you've got ball pen, you've got brush pen. The brush pen is quite nice. I think this is a new one in comparison to the old good notes and it just adds a bit of like a calligraphy vibe to whatever you're writing so if we do this and let's increase that and I can just put here okay my handwriting is a bit wrecked but for whoever has a good handwriting I think that will make a good style for titles one thing I have noticed though and I'm being a bit picky now is that even though my handwriting is really bad I have noticed that it's a bit worse on this app in comparison to notability I'm finding myself wanting to erase and rewrite a bit more in this app than in notability so I would say that in terms of where it sits 
like the actual writing experience, notability is probably a bit better, then comes good notes, then comes one note. The second tool I wanna to talk about is the eraser tool. So if I click on it, you can see that I've got three different sizes here, small, medium, and a large one. And what you find is when I press and hold, there's a little circle that comes up, showing me exactly which part of the page I'm erasing. And this is on one note, but notability doesn't have this. And one thing that's also really nice is that the eraser tool can erase part of a stroke or a full stroke. And this is something that OneNote has. So for example, if I do a full stroke here and I add this, so I can do erase entire stroke and let's do that and just touch it and it's all gone. Whereas if I remove that, then I do that and it just erases part of it, right? And that gives you a lot more control. Now, GoodNotes actually takes this a step further and it adds something called auto deselect. Okay, so if you go in here and turn that on, this has a lot to do again with the minimum number of clicks required to access a tool. Well, let's go back to the classic traditional way of taking notes. So I've got a little throwback here with an actual pencil and actual eraser. Usually what you used to do is write like that, then you have to put the pen down, pick up the eraser, erase, put the eraser down, pick up the pen and continue writing again. Now what this tool actually lets you do is write a bit, drop the pen, pick up the eraser, erase and then suddenly the pen just appears in your hand and you can just continue writing and that's pretty sick still let me show you what it looks like on here so now i can just write and then i just start erasing once drop and the pen starts working again so the third tool i want to talk about is the highlighter tool and there's two specific things about it the first thing is that it has an auto straightening function so for example we've got some text here and if i click on that and make sure the draw straight line is on then if i just do that then it straightens up automatically see that um, and with notability you can do the same thing literally just by pressing and clicking and then just drawing a straight line I don't prefer one of the other to be honest and the second thing is that the highlight now goes under the text and not above the text so for example let's put some some stuff on here and now if I do that and if I highlight now you can see now that the black color is kind of faded but now if I let go, it's almost like it goes under the text. Whereas on Notability, it kind of fades the text away. On OneNote, it doesn't do this. So this is a nice function too. But the fourth tool is the Shapes tool. And overall, I would say that this works really well too. So if I go into the Shapes tool and I click on it, a few options come up. First of all, I can change the type of pen I want. And then I can turn on the fill color, which when the shape is made, it will fill it with kind of a grayish shade. So for example, let's do this here now and maybe do a triangle and it fills it with this gray area and it makes the shape actually quite neatly and quite nice. Uh, I can also make like squares or rectangles. I can make circles. Yeah, just like that. Yeah, so it works really nice. And let me show you some of the notes I've made using this. So you can see here that I've used the shapes tool in order to create these separate boxes for different areas of my notes. So I've created it here, I've done it here, and I've done it here. Uh, and also I've done the same thing with the middle line here. So it created an auto shapes line downwards. Uh, and also I've done this little square here. Um, so yeah, it works really well. I would say in comparison to Notability, they just work different. I wouldn't say that one is better than the other. This is a bit faster because you just draw the shape and it just comes up. Whereas on Notability, you need to press hold, make a line, press hold, make another line, and that can take a bit longer. But on the other hand, that gives you a lot more precision for where you want the square to go. Now finally, we're gonna talk about the fifth and final tool, and that is the zoomed in writing. Now, with the GoodNotes app, you've got a bit more leeway with how big you want the zoomed in area to be. So if you see that here, that is how big it goes. Whereas on Notability, it's a bit smaller. The other thing is that you can kind of manipulate how big this is as well. See that? So it gives you a bit more option in terms of how big you want it to be. Now, if you've seen the Notability video, you would have seen that you've got this blue area at the end, which helps you move the square once you've written a whole sentence. So you would keep writing like this, and then as soon as you get to this area here, then it would move on forward. Now, GoodNotes does this a bit differently. And what happens is, if you keep writing here, and once you get to the halfway line, you can see that this blue box opens up on the left-hand side. And this blue box now is a copy of what's happening at the end of the right-hand side. And this just helps you move the box once you finish. So if I've written here and I get to the end, now I wanna continue onwards from here. All I need to do is just move here and keep on writing testing. And you can see that the box is moved and I can just keep writing my sentence and then 
again the copy comes up here and I can keep writing here. So I would say that those are the key features that makes good notes a really good note taking app pun not intended. Another thing actually I can just mention quickly, you now have the option of horizontal scrolling or vertical scrolling so now you can see the horizontal is on and if I just X this I can scroll like that but also I can turn that off and change it to vertical. Just to conclude, I would say that there isn't a single best app out there that will fit the needs of everyone. It just depends on what you're really looking for. So for example, uh, GoodNotes has a really nice interface. It looks fresh and new. The writing experience is quite nice. You've got all of these tools here that make it really efficient to access with very few clicks. Whereas uh, I haven't been able to find a Mac app for this or a PC app. Let me know if there is one out there, but personally I haven't been able to find one. Whereas in Notability, you've got the Mac app, you've got a really nice writing experience experience, you've got the recording of lectures and all of that syncing up. On the other hand, OneNote has an excellent syncing function with any PC or a Mac. You've got all of those other functions I spoke about in the other video. So they all have pros and cons, but I would say that right now, if this had the audio recording, this would probably top the list. I hope you liked the video. If you liked the video, then like the video, comment, subscribe, holler back.